So let's talk about a biotechnology called recombinant DNA technology. Here's the syllabus objectives. Just some terminology that you've probably heard of before is genetically modified organisms. They're organisms which have had their genome modified through artificial methods. Uh, this could be taking genes and inserting them into uh, the genome of an organism, or it could be uh, irradiating seeds on Earth or in space to see if it can create beneficial mutations. But another way to do it is by taking DNA, a gene, perhaps from another species, and inserting it into the genome of a species. And that's what we mean by transgenic organisms. Those which have had genes from different species introduced into their genomes. So recombinant DNA technology is a way of taking uh, genetic material and inserting it into the genome. So it's at artificially made DNA strands, and it's formed by combining two or more gene sequences. It's used in genetic engineering, specifically recombinant DNA technology. Now, this is essentially what the syllabus objective is, and, uh, and it's a really nice summary of what we're actually doing here. So first of all, we need to isolate and cut the DNA of the gene of interest, and we use a restriction enzyme to be able to do that. Next, we need to insert the DNA into a vector, and the vector is a plasmid. Then we need to glue together or join that DNA in the plasmid using DNA ligase enzyme. And then finally, we need to amplify the amount of R DNA, um, recombinant DNA that we've got using bacterial transformation. So I'm going to take you through each of those steps. But the easiest way to remember is isolation, insertion, joining, amplification. I-I-J-A. So the isolation part, we use restriction enzymes. So these enzymes cut DNA to a very specific nucleotide sequence. There's lots of different enzymes that scientists can select depending on what DNA sequence they actually want to split. Some of the time they're cut in blunt ends where it's they cut at the same location in both DNA strands. Other times it's sticky ends, which is beneficial for us because it's an offset location. So you've got these short sequences of unpaired nucleotides and that's helpful for us. Then we insert it into a plasmid. So the genomic chromosome for, uh, for bacteria is in this big, long, circular chromosome. But there's additional chromosomes um, called plasmids. And it's these plasmids that we use as the vector to be able to introduce this new genetic material. And this is the process. First of all, we identify the gene of interest and then we isolate and cut it using a restriction enzyme. So the result of that is that we end up with um, a cut with sticky ends. So then we insert the gene of interest into the plasmid and it is going to um, stick together at these complementary base pairs. Then finally, we join it together using DNA ligase. And what that does, so you can imagine we've got our hydrogen bonds between the complementary base pairs. So what the DNA ligase does is actually glues together the sugar phosphate back backbone. Okay, so we isolate and cut it using the restriction enzyme at a specific location, provides these sticky ends with these nucleotides that are overhanging. We insert it into the plasmid and it lines up with the complementary base pairs and then the DNA ligase joins it together, joins together the sugar phosphate backbone. After that, we need to amplify it. We need to make more of the gene. So we've inserted the gene of interest as well as an antibiotic resistant gene into the plasmid. And then we insert the plasmid into the bacterial cell. Now what we need to do is we need to culture the bacterial cells. Now, the reason why we have this antibiotic resistant gene is because they actually inoculate this agar plate with um, the agar is impregnated with an antibiotic. Only the bacteria that have got this antibiotic resistant gene 
and our gene of interest are going to grow. So all of the bacterial colonies that grow are going to be the ones with uh, the gene of interest. So this process is called bacterial transformation. So we're taking the plasmid, we're putting it into bacterial cells, and then we're growing our bacterial cells to amplify the number of genes. So DNA, recombinant DNA technology has been used, uh, ha has already been used widely, and it's got tremendous potential for the future. It's now used in the production of insulin, human insulin. It's been used to develop vaccines like the HPV vaccine Gardasil. It's been used uh, for cancer treatment, uh, for human growth hormone, and also for, um, for making uh, genetically modified crops like the uh, Bt corn and Bt cotton. So there's a real potential for gene therapy. So that's the use of this DNA recombinant DNA technology to replace genes that are missing or faulty and, and make this a, a form of treatment for inherited conditions. They're currently using it for somatic gene therapy, so um, to treat the, the somatic or body cells in cystic fibrosis. There's the potential in the future for germ cell therapy, so re actually replacing the missing or faulty genes uh, in the sperm or the ova. Now, there's lots of issues with that and concerns, so it's currently banned for human use. But that is recombinant DNA technology, and these were our syllabus objectives.